Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Silent Hill F. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Radian and Nvidia setting. And at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA, as you can see, Silent Hill F is compatible with all those DLSS overrides. So what I normally recommend in the global setting, now you have uh, the option DLSS override. So you can do it for all your game, not just game by game. Use the latest option and make sure that you always use the latest frame generation, rear reconstruction and DLSS 4. So it will always override it when you will open a game compatible for Silent Hill F. It's working, so I really recommend to do that. Smooth motion, I recommend to deactivate it. Too much input lag in this game. Um, low latency mode, go with on. I lock my FPS at 237 because uh, uh, I use the G-Sync on a 240Hz monitor. So you always need to be lower than your amount of refresh rate to keep your G-Sync. And for the shader cache size, I'm putting 100 gig because I have the space on my disk. If you don't, go with 10 because the default is 5. And it really depends on how many games that you install on your uh, computer. If you just have 3 or 4 games, that's not an issue. But if you have like 20, 25 and more than that, uh, sometimes your shader cache size will be full. So you will always need to rebuild your shader when you will open a game. So that can be a pain. After that, in the system, uh, make sure that you're using G-Sync if you have a... Uh, compatible monitor so me i'm using on at full screen and window on my second monitor make sure that you're using your native resolution and also make sure that you're using the is refresh rate from your monitor and the color option if you have um, a hdr monitor compatible with 10 bit color really important to use 10 with full over there i like to put my digital vibrance also at 55 percent uh more saturation a little bit less gray in the games one more thing in the performance, I like to put my power maximum at 133. It will give uh, more wattage to my GPU and normally my boost clock are a little bit longer. Um, I'm getting like 5-7% to 7 boost, but you need room on your uh, GPU, so you need good thermal because NVIDIA is using an algorithm to boost your clock. So if you have already bad thermal, it will not change anything, but if you have uh, the room on your GPU, it can help with your FPS. Now let's go to Radiant settings. So now for Radiant card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one, this one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game. So this game is using Unreal Engine 5 and it's not well optimized. I was getting a lot of stuttering. I think they're using the 5.2 version. I'm not too sure about it. So I'm going to show you which parameter that you need to change. But honestly, you will have more FPS, but you will still have some stuttering. So I hope they're going to fix some stuff with uh, some patches. But anyway, let's start with screen mode. I like to play full screen for this one. I unlimit I put my FPS at no limit. And also, I'm not using VSync. Uh, because I don't want to add any input lag. And anyway, I'm using G-Sync. Screen percentage, don't touch that. You will use the LSS or FSR anyway, so just stay at 100%. Uh, this one is a bit tricky. The indirect lighting and reflection, technically, you have the lumen from um, the um, Unreal Engine. Man, it, it, it's thinking your FPS. First of all, I don't recommend to use Epic. You're going to lose like 7% in your FPS. It's pretty crazy. If you have a mid computer or a decent computer, you can definitely test Lumen Eye. If not, just remove this one and use Crease Paint Reflection over there. You're going to get a nice 15% boost. Shadow quality, I recommend to go with medium. You can expect 4% boost. Uh, very high for texture quality if you have 8 gig and more of VRAM, 6 gig at high, 4 gig at medium, and less than 4 gig in VRAM, go with low. Shader quality, majority of the people can run high, didn't see a big improvement, honestly, it's like 1% for each bracket, so go with high with this one. 
Visual effect quality and post-processing quality, I recommend to go with medium and nice 5% boost. And also post-processing, uh, a little bit lower like that. Uh, the game is a little bit more sharp, I can say. So that's why I'm going with medium for this one. Uh, view distance quality, this one is really weird. I don't see any difference in my FPS, probably because you have a lot of fog in front of you. So I still go with very high. Anti-aliasing, this one is pretty easy. If you have an RTX card, just go DLSS. This is the best option. At quality, you can expect 10% boost. And at uh, balance, you can expect 15% boost. You can use balance at 1440p and 4K. Honestly, at 1080p, I recommend to go with quality. Balance is a bit blurry. So my recommendation is go with that. If you have FSR, just use quality. Uh, balance is too blurry. You can expect 8 to 12% boost with FSR at quality. Motion blur, I recommend to disactivate it um, just for better visibility. I don't like motion blur in any game. And this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any question on Silent Hill F, um, just write me your rig. So CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.